to Champion Select and we can see the first couple of bands coming out. Aatrox taken away from mm. Loveland. That was in their win against TSM, of course. Ended up 4-2-16 with that. Good champion to take out. Zed on the other side. We've already seen what Nuke Duck can do with it. That Aatrox ban really makes me sad. Every single game that's happened so far um, that Aatrox has been in, I haven't been able to cast. I have so <laughs> many little nuances that go into playing Aatrox. I want to contribute, but taking that away from Loveland is a great choice. He went with the one buff tower dive, which is what caught the other team off guard there. Uh, level two going for that and using the passive that early to get first blood was really beautiful play. But like we said, no York ban here, so I think that OMG uh, might go with that one and switch up their strategy. Well, the other band's coming down. Caitlyn and Oriana taken away here by the Lemon Dogs. Mm -hmm. Caitlyn again aimed towards San. It leaves that Corky up, or at least unless OMG ban it here for their final one. I mean, you're right to keep coming, bringing this Corky back up. It's a very high priority throughout this whole tournament. I think it only got through once so far, uh, not being picked yeah. or banned. And uh, it is up first for Lemon Dogs, but the first pick, very important, especially we talked about the mid laners here. Uh, both of these guys have big champion pools, and Cool is very well known for counter picking. So I don't think they're going to want to blow that one very early on the mid lane. So Elise being hovered over and selected here by Lemon Dogs. Now, this is a champion that Dexter is no stranger to. We finished 9 0 6 coming out of the jungle against Gaming Gear EU. But back in the summer split, when Lemon Dogs destroyed Gambit all the way back near the start of the season. That's where he started as well. So this Dexter, uh, this uh, Elise for Dexter, very dangerous. Yeah, if you want to be dueling early in the jungle, Elise is actually pretty good. She did have some resistances taken off of her spider form, so it's a little bit harder. And if she relies a lot on getting the jump on the other jungler so that she can land her combo and get the burst out early. But this cannon pickup as well for OMG, the first pick away from them, takes that away from Zoro Zero up in the top, who loves cannon. And second pick was Ari as well. We already mentioned that both mid laners have played that up until now. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be cool that gets that one this time around. Did play it against uh, TSM as well while we're on that point. Finished off with 11 kills. So certainly scary. Other side, Corky coming in finally for the Lemon Dogs, along with the Sona for me. Duo lane is extremely strong. Corky, once he hits level 6, poke with the Rockets is really good against Another AD carry that doesn't have too much to say, and someone that isn't going to be rushing a Bloodthirster, it really slowly whittles them down. And early on as well, Sona, uh, very strong poke with the power cords. It also means in the mid game, they've got a nice area of effect uh, power spike there from the bottom lane coming from that Corky and Sona. So let's have a look then over towards OMG. Picks starting to slow down a little bit as we get deeper in. Zyra is a champion that Big Pamela has exclusively played so far in Worlds. We're only two games in, though, and he's going to make it three here, uh, along with that Lee Sin pickup for Lovely. So it's not going to be Jungle York. My hopes are dashed again. Uh, it's going to be the Lee Sin this time. He performed very well on the Lee Sin, though, as well. We talked about the early gank up top that got them first blood, two kills, and the first turret. That's what snowballed them their first game. And they did lock that one in. The, ch the crowd's nice. cheering for the Fizz, I think. It's not the Zack cheer. I'm pretty sure that's for Fizz. <laughs> I think we're safe in thinking that that is a cheer for Fizz coming down. Zack going to be picked up as well. Again, another champion used against Gaming Gear uh, for Zoro Zero in the top lane. But this Fizz, we've seen throughout the season that New Duck is definitely good with Fizz. He's got tabs there to teach him, who was famed, obviously, for his Fizz over in Europe when he right. actually played mid lane before. So. Strong, scary lineup from Lemon Dogs. Yeah, Tabs, he's still actually confident in his ability to play mid lane as well. He said that he could play mid lane right now in the LCS and <laughs> he would be fine, even though he's already switched over to AD. So they've got a lot of uh, mid lane players over on that Lemon Dogs team. But I think that, you know, it's really Zoro Zero that shoves up his lane and he's the one who does the roaming. So it'll be interesting how they make use of this Fizz sort of in the mid game. You know, once he gets the Lich Bane though, then he'll be looking for those roaming assassinations. Meanwhile, OMG, cool first picking that Ari. There's not a lot of counters to Ari. I mean, Fizz is, is pretty good against him, uh, against her, but he is so confident in that, he's gonna be looking to roam very early, as soon as he's level six. The other lanes are gonna have to watch out because cool combos with Lovelin for very early uh, roaming kills, superbly well. Final pick coming out there for <laughs> OMG was the AD carry. Tristana, let's have some thoughts on that one, Kobe. Yeah, the Tristana, that's definitely uh, kind of falling off a little bit here. There's a couple reasons. Because she passively pushes her lane, 
because of the explosive shot that um, you level up early anyway. And then also, um, with the nerfs to Blade of the Ruin King, it, it means that she does have to wait really till that late game. She's got a nice, very early power spike. As soon as she hits six, six it's a good burst. Um, but then the mid game is kind of weak for her, and then she'll really shine at the late game. So let's have a look then what you guys at home have been thinking about this one. According to lolesports.com, 70% of you think that OMG will keep their perfect record intact. And it was also between the analysts very, very split. Two of you, Jack and Crepo, going for Lemon Dogs, Monty and Double Lift going for OMG. So this one up in the air, but the fans, they've not been wrong too often in this one, we have to say, going for OMG. Yeah, 70% is actually quite a lot. I'm, I'm pretty glad the analysts were split two and two because this game really will be close. It's kind of a classic matchup here. OMG, everyone knows they like the early aggression. They didn't bring out the Jungle York. They usually sin, so it's probably going to be a similar story to what we've seen from them already. And Lemon Dogs prefer a slower early game so they don't get behind, and then they methodically finish out the mid and late games by just taking the objectives that are clear and slowly pushing up. So we're going to get into game then. An important one here in Group A, the unbeaten OMG taking on Europe's second place. And honestly, the, the shining light team from the summer split, we have to say, leading all the way uh, from week six in that one. So let's get into this one. We've said level one going to be very important. Lemon Dogs tried something funky against SKTT1. We all know that OMG are not scared of getting that, you know, their hands dirty at level one. Yeah, and we talked about how Lemon Dogs have scouted OMG uh, the past day, but OMG also saw that level one. So Lemon Dogs are not going to pull the same trick twice. Much more defensive this time. And they only drop one ward. They use the rest of their champions as uh, body wards here, just sitting in the bushes, making sure that OMG don't pull anything tricky. And it's actually a very defensive start for both teams. OMG might be doing a late invade on the blue, to take this one away very early from Dexter. So we see that checking that brush up in the top side. They will be moving down towards that blue buff, which there's no vision there right now from Lemon Dogs. They've sat quite happily down on their red buff. So this could be a very interesting start. And by the looks of things, could see an early steal. They've got those deep wards down. So they're happy at this point, OMG, with the vision that they've got. Lemon Dogs did not see that late invade either from OMG. So this ward, this lane ward here, that's going to see the duo lane for Lemon Dogs go up top, will tip off OMG. Currently, they have Kennen already up there. And it doesn't look like they are going to switch it either. He has started Doran's Blade, though. And Kennen with Doran's Blade start, it's a little bit rough in the two versus one situation, as we've already seen earlier in this tournament. And now he's going to recall, as soon as he gets that info, they are pulling the switch. Yep, switch going to come straight down. Big Pomelo and San headed up there. That Zyra Tristana lane. We see Dexter. He's kicking things off with his red buff, as is Lovelin over the other side for OMG. And we'll see if, uh, you know, with the vision that they've got down early, whether they'll be trying to steal things away. But the stage we're at at the tournament, the fact that OMG are so good at level one and are 2 0 in the group, looks like we're just going to see a pretty standard start coming out. Yeah, they, they definitely did get their money's worth that, with that ward, though, because we've already seen how how bad it is for a Ken and Doran Blade start. He, he got one pot, and both of their side lanes are getting back very late to the lane. San takes so much harass. Good job by Tabs. They actually have the experience advantage here, too. So as soon as they hit level two, they can put even more pressure. Dangerous start here for OMG and San. Meanwhile, Nuke Duck in the middle, taking a lot of damage here from Cool. And We'll see how that Fizz handle things at level four, where he could get started. Dexter roaming up. Top. I love this from Dexter. They're going to take advantage of the early harass that they got in on San. Elise is amazing at turret dives. She does have flash and repel available for this. There's only 150 HP on San right now. He still has his barrier, though, so this could be a well played bait. Well, let's see the recall. Going to be started Ooh. there for San. Is that the bait? Are they looking to bait them in here underneath that tower and see Tags if they can them. lock them down? This could be very, very scary for Lemon Dogs if they get involved. San holding far enough back as to not take any poke out of Sona and Corky. They have to be careful because the longer they wait, the more likely it is that Lublin will be heading up top. And if they try and pull off a 3 versus 1, 3 versus 2 tower dive on OMG and fail, 
then it would be the complete same story that OMG's already had. Even though they're the ones not going aggressive, they're not the ones initiating the tower dive. If Loveland's able to, to counter this, okay, they just show. <laughs> a lot of build up there for not much action. Well, Sant did manage to get himself back. You can see in the uh, player cam down there on the left, Mithy. Just having a few words after that one, realizing that they couldn't quite get things together as they would have maybe hoped. But they should be able to get a bit of tam uh, damage down onto this turret. Lovelin actually oh coming no. from the side. He's going to land the Q. Tabs going to Valkyrie away, but Lovelin will follow him. He has to flash away from that one. Realize he's gone a little too deep. Okay, flash from the jungler for exhaust off the support is a pretty decent trade. And they also chunk down Tabs, so he's going to have to recall right now. They also did get a good try ward, but now it's Dexter. He has the opportunity to steal away this big Wraith camp and get uh, a little experience back since he spent so much time camping that top lane. He's a little bit behind Loveland right now. He's going to be able to steal that one away. Where is he going to go back to? They put a ward down mm. in that top try bush, and honestly, there's been no answer to that one coming out of OMG. Dexter spending a lot of time here up top. I think it will pay off. They did not ward behind them. Sand still does have both of his summers, though. This could be very, very interesting as Corky and Sona get back into lane. The pings coming down. They're not 100% sure where that Lee Sin is at this point, and I think that's what's slowing them. Oh, they have vision of this, so Dexter's going to have to back off. Not able to make anything happen from so much time spent in this side of the jungle. Now he's in trouble. Well, going in there on towards Lovelin, who's going to chase him through from this one. Rappel goes in, but he's coming straight back down on top of him. Charm will be flashed away from there by Dexter. Nuke Duck came across. <laughs> nice cocoon landing there, Max Range. Onto Lovelin is Nuke Duck. Going to go in aggressive here onto Cool, who's not really got much mana, but in the end, no kills. Now there could be kills up top, though. More action. Sand going very low, but again, they've not quite got the damage to finish this one off. Big per uh, Permelo is going to be chasing here on towards Mithy, though. And Mithy right now does have a flash available. There is a grasping roots landing in, but Sand not close enough. Loveling came up to help, but they've seen that. So now, both junglers without flashes after that last exchange. The big thing is that Ari without flash, pre-6, you can actually pull off a gank. Okay, now she's six. Tough break. <laughs> <laughs> Timing on that one. There is the grassing roots coming out once again. There is that mid lane cool and Nuke Duck both up at level six at this point. And we'll see if any action goes down there. Meanwhile, Lovelin has snuck himself into the brushing top. And we don't have Dexter returning top either, so he's spent enough time up here. He doesn't feel he feel he doesn't feel like he got anything out of that time and he wants to catch back up by farming his jungle. Whereas Loveland has not given up on the situation up top. We see this a lot in the Chinese LPL season. The junglers will repeatedly gank the same lane over and over again. But as Lemon Dogs are freezing right now, there's not much that you can pull off with a lease in. And we've heard, we've talked about this early game for OMG, these three men dives that mm -hmm. they've done so seamlessly well in their other games. We're seven minutes into this one, and Lemon Dogs have managed to hold all those attempts away. It is a little bit of an interesting twist from OMG going with Tristana here, too. They do have a stronger late game than they usually do. They've got Ari, who's an amazing assassin, one of the most highly prized assassins in the game right now, to go pick people off. And then they also have a lot of midline control for their team fighting situations. If they have a slicing maelstrom from Kennen plus the strangle thorns from Zyra, it's a huge amount of area control among the uh, the first dragon fight that will come out. So they actually have a very well-rounded team composition right now. And it's the early game is really just up to the plays that Loveland can or can't make. So far, Dexter's been a good done a good job at uh, going even with Loveland. And he will pick up his red buff once again. We'll see if he, with that, takes himself into a lane. His mid lane being very quiet in terms of the junglers. They've not really visited there whatsoever. Something that surprised me because Dex, who we've seen in the past, has spent a lot of time helping out New Duck. Here he comes, the cocoon though. Not going to land. Cool, of course, has his ultimate available. Going to be hard to lock down. Yeah, that was, that was sort of a half-hearted gank right there. Didn't, you didn't really expect to burn anything. Cool has his spirit rush available. So he could have even burned that if he had to. But really the story from all the early action was the CS lead that Taps has been able to accrue over San. And that is also partially due. Okay, so that was the, <laughs> the ticking damage there. It's unfortunate. 
Uh, Dex, oh, here we go, aggressive up top. Diving onto Mithy, Exhaust is put down onto him. There's a ward, Mithy gonna fall, his first blood coming in, but will they be able to make it too? Right now, Tabs, he's gonna stick around because Dex is coming in. It's Tabs that gets the kill back. First blood to OMG, but an instant reply from Lemon Dogs. And that was a good job of Tabs pulling in the ADN support. After he had already lost his support, they were still able to answer with a kill at least. So it wasn't as bad as it looked. I was about to talk about the CS lead that he has gotten over San though, and it was because they switched those lanes. So San and Big Pamil were a bit, little bit late to lane, and that's why they got chunked down so early from the power cord of Sona and the phosphorus bomb of Corky. So Newt, you'll notice no blue buff after that was taken yeah. by Dexter. A little bit unfortunate. Not the end of the world for this one though. Yeah, there's a few things they have to be wary of when you're a mid laner and you're trying to get that blue buff from um, your jungler. It's the red buff burn. Also, there's that mastery in defense where uh, the minion or the monsters will do damage to themselves when they hit your jungler. And then you also have to worry about the elite spiders. And obviously, Dexter didn't worry about any of them well enough. <laughs> Able to uh, pick that one up. We'll, we'll just say he wanted to do that. We'll, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt from this side of things. Cool, though, on the other side, does have that blue buff gifted to him by Lovelin. Also has a nice CS lead there in that mid lane. And because Fizz is melee, he often gets behind in CS fairly early. Uh, being behind only 11 right now at 10 minutes is actually very well done by Nukeduck. I think that's a very acceptable CS disadvantage for a Fizz versus Ari matchup. Wow, Pink Ward's coming down there, and Lemon Dogs instantly getting themselves in position from that one. Dexter is around that area as well. Zoro Zero has actually come down from this top lane, and this is where things get dangerous. We mentioned earlier Zoro Zero not scared to leave that top lane to get involved in mid. I'm glad you brought that up, because that was a sort of classic Zoro Zero move, where he's got Pink Ward in that tri bush, shove up the lane, then rotate down to try and make something happen mid. Cool right now is just so mobile, though. Um, weren't able to take advantage of these triple pink wards that Lemon Dogs have placed up in the top side. So earlier on, that obviously Zach and Kennen were facing off down in this bottom lane. They've now switched since then, but Zoro Zero are doing a good job still of holding out uh, on that one. Just five CS behind at this point. Got that cowl in there as well, working himself up. And we'll see how that one goes. Double Doran's Blade blasting one now in there as well for Go Go into Kennen. Yeah, the Zach Cannon matchup is, uh, you know, just kind of a farming matchup right now because Zach has gone Doran Shield to start, reducing the auto attacks, which is Cannon's earlier hat, a harass. And then with the Cow, it gets also the magic resist and regen for the magic damage that Cannon puts out later sta at later stages. So Newt, they're uh, taking a bit more damage. Lovely, and actually, inside of the tri bush right now, this could be extremely dangerous on top of the wall. Opportunity for a counter gank here. Okay, this is gonna be a three on three. Get a little excited. There they go. Cocoon landing onto him. They're gonna all dive onto him. Flash away from Lovely, but can he escape this one? He gets the W off towards Sand. Stays alive, but he's low now, and Dragon is there. Yeah, that's still definitely a win for Lemon Dogs. Chunking out the jungler that low means that now Dexter has free roam of the map. He was seen by this pink ward going up mid, and Cool is not afraid. That's from the water's coming down. Can they lock him up? He should be, though. Cool, up to him. cool in trouble. Has to use the ultimate to dash back towards his turret. Stays alive. So Dexter, so far, chunking down Loveland, then chunking down mid lane. He's got some good harass off, but he hasn't really been able to convert anything. Wow, dive in there. Crescendo coming back, but it won't be enough to save Mithy. There's the jump and the Valkyrie away from Tabs at exactly the same time. Tabs survives. No one there to follow up like that last one, though. So that's the the post-level 6 Tristana that I was talking about, the burst that he has with the rocket jump, explosive shot, and buster shot. It's a very good combo for killing supports. So we were talking about how Dragon was opened up by Lemon Dogs earlier with that damage. Now it's OMG with that kill that are in position and got it down to below half HP. Dexter is hanging around. He wants to go for the steal. Ooh. That won't happen though. It's Lovelin that will smite that one away and Lemon Dogs back off. This duo lane for OMG is doing a lot of work for them right now. Even with that early CS disadvantage, they've been able to make plays on their own. And this one was able to be converted into a dragon. This is one of the reasons that OMG were at the top of the LPL, the Chinese scene. They often will fight and then go straight for objectives just like that. Very well done. See, Nuke Duck able to pretty much dodge everything that Cool's throwing at him there. 
That CS lead has slightly increased for him. We can see that Nuke Duck wants to make sure he's got vision around that area. He doesn't quite have chum the waters off cooldown, so uh, wants to be very, very safe on that front. Lovely not being able to get involved in any of the any of the two kills right now for for an OMG game. This is actually really, really low in terms of kills. I'm I'm definitely surprised that it's actually the bottom lane for OMG that's picking up the slack in the early game that uh, that you know Loveland hasn't been able to convert. But again, you have to applaud them. And now. He got it this time, so that's why everybody's laughing. It did. De <laughs> Dexter actually backed away completely from that one. He's yeah. like, no, don't do that again, Dexter. That wouldn't be very nice of you. Nuke Dog able to pick up his first blue buff of the game here, 14 and a half minutes down. Let's have a look at the overall picture. It's around about a 2,000 gold lead at this point for OMG. And again, even though OMG is ahead, Nuke Dog in the mid lane is doing very well. We talked about his style being just... Uh, staying in mid lane mostly and until he can accrue that big power spike. He's doing a good job on Fizz, staying relatively close with Ari, which is difficult to do. And once he's able to combine this Sheen and Blasting Wand up into that Lich Bane, then he'll start to look for the plays that he can create on other members of OMG. Let's have a look down the AD carries here as well while we're at it. Two out of the three components, main components of that Trinity Force done for Tabs as Corky. On the other side, we can see that uh, you know the, the workings for Tristana there with that Vamp Scepter uh, for a Bloodthirst of also looking like it will be that Infinity Edge first. Pretty classic there for Tristana. She really does thrive in the end game with the, that attack speed she gets from her rapid fire ability. So going Infinity Edge or Bloodthirster, um, you know, into Phantom Dancers is a very classic build. Play of the Rune King also fairly popular, but like I said, with the range nerf and the cooldown nerf to the active, some people are definitely thinking twice about it on her now even. San just freezing out that lane here. They've got a, wa a single ward down, to be honest, in the river there. Obviously being very careful about Dexter because in his previous Elise games, the fact that he's got off to such strong starts has been what's helped Lemon Dogs go forward in the game. This time around, that's not quite worked out for him the way they'd have wished. Well, I think, yeah, both of the junglers have matched up very well here. Nuke Duck just throwing off the blue buff ultimate there. It's because the, he does have that cooldown reduction, so he's not worried about just using that on R very quickly. They trade ultimate actives right there, and they'll be back up at very similar times. Actually, Loveland is coming around here. They're ping right on top of him. That's the ward that Nuke Duck put down a little bit earlier on when he came back into that lane. Tabs and Mythic also been very careful in the bottom side as well. They saw that um, Big Pamela had just gone out there to ward. But look at this. OMG actually moving up through the side of the Lemon Dogs jungle. Really big fans of contesting the blue bus over and over. Wow, he runs into the wall. <laughs> Leeson couldn't quite get over there. But what I really want to point out is... Definitely some miscommunication here from OMG. They've built two uh, of these Abyssal Scepters on each of their solo laners. Uh, Ari, if she wanted a, an item for herself, if they were going to be split up. Well, Nuke Duck does get dope here by Loveland. Yeah, kicking him, or trying to kick him back towards cool there. Didn't quite work out, but either way, it's freed them up for their second turret takedown of the game here in that mid lane. And you can see that while it's not a, a high kill game, they're starting to really build up that Goldie with that Dragon, with those couple of turrets going down. And the roam is going to continue here from Loveland. They've comboed Go going after he took his turret. He's double roaming with the jungler now. They've all set their sights towards this bottom lane. And Lemon Dogs have to be aware of this one. But can they defend it? That's the problem. They've got four versus three down here. And you can see that they're just not comfortable with sticking around for that one. OMG going to pick up the third and final outer turret left there that was standing for the Lemon Dogs. All right, since they aren't going to fight over this, we have a little bit of time to go back over those dual abyssal scepters that were bought. If, you know, go going and cool, we're like, okay, we're going to be split up. So we'll, we're going to both want these auras. Then a solo item. For Ari, it would be the Deathfire Grass if he was going to rush something, if they wanted 100% PO. I think that was definitely miscommunication on their parts. They both got the same aura here. And that is a little bit of hope for Lemon, Do Lemon Dogs because some of that gold lead is spent in uh, maybe the not most optimal way for OMG. Meanwhile, we've hit that Lich Bane and we've also hit the Trinity Force for Lemon Dogs. So even though they're behind right now, they have fairly good items. 
before the next dragon that pops up. 30 seconds on the next dragon will be very telling for the mid game. If Lemon Dogs decide to go for this one and OMG contest, it's going to be a very, very dirty fight. Well, Zoro Zero has come away from that top lane. Now we can see that Cool in middle is going to be pushed a little bit here by Nuked Up. But Lemon Dogs trying to hold this position in here on the Dragon. They've got Pink Wards down. They've got all five men on this bottom side. Now Kennen is nowhere near. He's starting to come down. Tristana coming from base as well. Lemon Dogs are going to get a lot of damage, if not take it, before OMG can get there. Only thing Lemon Dogs have to worry about here is Cool picking one person off and assassinating them. They did have Go Going Roam down. So now Lemon Dogs are actually forced to try and get behind their turret before OMG can actually start getting damage on it. They're a few steps behind right now. Well, let's see. Four men on the top of it. Will be a fit as Big Pomelo comes around. And I'm not sure that Lemon Dogs can stop this happening. That turret being shredded down right now. Will fall, but here comes Zoro Zero from the side. Where are they going? They've gone on towards Go Go, and they're going to dive right oh! on him. He gets nuked down. There's a four man crescendo at the back as well. Cool and Big Pomelo both going low as Tab Falker is in. He picks up another one. Here comes Zoro Zero once again. Lovely actually diving to the back line. He's going to fall. And right now, four men are down. Only Sam left the light here for OMG. Can they carry on and keep up with him? No, they can't. They let him go. Well, that's three men left alive to push that outer turret in mid. Very good initiate there from Lemon Dogs just at the end of the turret. So they were able to get the damage down before OMG were able to react. We saw Go going get bursted completely down by Noob Duck getting chunked out on the side here. All right, yeah. So let's look. A beautiful cocoon plus the initiate from Zoro Zero, and Go Going gets blasted by Nuke Duck. This is the, the Abyssal Scepter rather than the Hourglass for him. And at this point, that big one missing was huge, actually, for OMG. And that's the reason that they were actually to answer right here. San in the back was still at full life, so he was comfortable rocket jumping in. One of the few situations we have the Tristana going for those very late rocket jumps into a full team. But he was confident enough Especially since there was no more mana left on Nuke Duck, that he could clean that one up. So that leaves us at 5 4 in kills. 4 0 in turrets, though, for OMG. Something that Lemon Dogs will be uh, certainly thinking about changing. It's close to a 4,000 gold lead as well for the Chinese side at this point. And I think, really, doubling up on those Abyssal Scepters right there. If Go Going either had an Hourglass or cool. Oh no, no Hourglass still. He's going down. Yeah, they're going to bounce onto him here with Zach as well. It's Tabs that will finish off that one. And I was talking about towers and how they want to go for them. Meanwhile, Nuke Duck here in the mid lane. He's in all uh -oh. kinds of trouble. He's a dead man. Cool will pick that one off. But well, they trade that for a killing top plus that tower. Dual assassinates right here for both teams. But it's Lemon Dogs who got the turret down. So at least they got their first turret taken. That's some global gold for them. This is really where pretty much all the deficit is coming from for Lemon Dogs right now is in turret money. OMG took this opportunity to get full ward control of the lizard side jungle of Lemon Dogs though. And that's very scary thing when you have an Ari and when you have a Lee Sin. So let's have a look down the items once again. AD carries now. We mentioned that Triforce earlier. Finish four taps. He's now added that last whisper into that one. Other side, Fortress Standard at 3 0 1, we should mention as well, right now for San. And a goal between them is still in favor of San down there. Only a couple of CS in the lead, but you know, 3 0 1 and those extra global objectives that OMG have been able to pick up. He's already got that Infinity Edge done as well. Yeah, it's all that tower money is still keeping OMG ahead. But if, Le if Lemming Dogs can keep this one solid out for a little bit longer, they are going to look for picks with their Fizz. It's just that OMG are doing the exact same thing with their Ari. Mithy doing a very good job with that Oracle's clearing out their Lizard side jungle. Nuke Duck finds his pick. There is Chum. The water's coming in. San had already jumped away. And look at the damage there coming out from Nuke Duck's Fizz. He will pick up another kill for himself. But right now, Mithy. Cool going in. Mithy going low. What's down the crescendo onto three of them? We're going to have Zoro Zero diving in. There is Go going. Popping his ultimate. Tab falling low. He will be picked up in the end. They switch around to Lovelin. And now Tab's finally getting in onto the fight. He'll get another one back. It will end two for two. So, I was talking about both assassins getting picks. They both got their picks right there. Nuke Duck got his solo onto San, but then Cool had a very good charm under the turret, 
onto Mithy, completely taking him out. He did get Crescendo off, which almost saved it for them. And another trade here for both teams. This is a very close game. Even though OMG have the lead, the outer turrets are looking a little bit weak for them. So Lemon Dogs can actually close up that gold lead fairly quickly with just one, one team fight. One successful team fight. It's a better choice of words. I got you. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, sorry, Go Goin is close to finishing off that Zonya's Hourglass there as well, which is certainly going to be helping things out as things go forward. That DFG we saw from Cool last time in that fight, how dangerous it is at this point. Other side, Zonya's is now added in to that Lich Bane for Noob Duck, and well, we all know what a Fizz can do at this stage. Of the that game. is, the, I think that is the scariest point for a Fizz, because Lich Bane, yes, that's a crucial damage spike for him. He gets a, a huge amount of power from adding another ra AP ratio to his already very strong kit. But now, with the Hourglass, he has the ability to buy himself time for those cooldowns to get another rotation of abilities off, and he becomes an extremely potent assassin right now. Same thing, though, for Cool. He has the two items that make Ari devastating right now. He finally has the Deathfire Grass. He will be able to kill Missy Mithy all by himself next time. Well, let's see right now a bit of a dance around because that dragon, as you see in the top left, is coming up in around about 20 seconds time. Pink Ward's put down a Oracle Elixir for Big Pomelo right now. They've got the positional advantage, but Lemon Dogs, if you've seen anything from them before, they're not going to let that go. And OMG are ready to fight for this one. They have the Hourglass now on go going. Like we said, the Deathfire Grass is ready to go. This is definitely going to be a brawl between all 10 members. There is Zoro Zero getting himself in the corner. They've cleared out the vision that Lovelin put down. Will he decide to jump over onto the OMG team? This is all about the area control from the two AoE support ultimates that are going to go down. If Mithy can land a good crescendo first, then Lemon Dogs can get the jump on this fight. Zoro Zero starting to charge up. The dragon has gone down, but look at the damage coming onto Zoro Zero already. Ooh. And he can jump away from the backside of that dragon pit, but we see Lemon Dogs going south. OMG going straight towards that mid lane. This is again the same thing we have saw at the last dragon. Lemon Dogs grab it, but OMG get the positional advantage, pushing down the lane first. Last time they got a turret, even though Lemon Dogs won the team fight. This time. Lemon Dogs are actually in a small corridor, which is very bad for them. Zyra would be huge. They can't walk down that small corridor. Turret damage already coming in here from OMG. Not quite half health taken away, but certainly a good chunk. Now here oh, comes Mithy from the side. Flash Crescendo comes in. Chum the Waters goes down onto Go Going. There's the Strangle Thorns as Dexter has to flash away, but Tabs is right on top of them. Uh, sorry, Nukeduk on top of them there with that fist. He will use the Zonyas, but he's miles away from the rest of the oh, team. He he's still managing to get away. There is the Elastic Slingshot in. Let's Bounce comes down. Lovelin's going to have to try and escape this one. Flash over the wall from Tabs. That's a double kill for him. And somehow they turn that around there and it will end with a two for nothing. Again, Go Going right here. Go Going gets chunked out early. He has to burn his Flash and his Zanyas before he even can oh, get the damage from his Mel. Oh, that was just huge for them. Lemon Dog's doing a great job here. Always targeting Go Going. The beautiful Flash Crescendo I talked about. The ultimate's coming from there. He had to use his Zanyas everything. Now he's going to pop it late. Nuke Duck does a great job kiting the damage from this ultimate. And we talked about the Hourglass allowing him to get another rotation off. He gets it here to survive. Zero Zero is not afraid to go back in because he's got to sell the vision. And right here, Loveland actually with his safeguard uh, second active smites the golem for the extra small HP that you get from Spell Vamp. But that's not going to save you from a full health Corky. Now oh, Corky able to finish that one off and look at that gold. It's come back to just 200 the difference, 10-7, two turrets still behind all the Lemon Dogs right now, but these fights slowly but surely working in their favor. They're now starting to take control of OMG's jungle. Yeah, that last fight was a huge confidence booster for Lemon Dogs. Can't emphasize enough their focus on Go Going, getting him to burn the Flash and the Hourglass before slicing Maelstrom, effectively negating that huge area control that they wanted with that pick. It's completely deciding these team fights. Nuke Duck is sat waiting by that top lane. The lure of a, a juicy wave of minions coming around. He's thinking someone's going to get drawn into that and he wouldn't be too uh -oh. far He's away. But Lovelin coming in, is he going to go for a 2v1? I doubt it. And he decides 
And we're getting away from this one. Let's not stick around. Back straight off. OMG, though. They're still slightly ahead in gold, and they still, in their back pockets, have this late-game Tristana. Already, Infinity Edge plus Phantom Dancer completed. So if they are able to not have Go going chunked out very early, they still have a really strong chance in the team fights because they can control the mid grounds, and Tristana will be able to put out a lot of damage free firing from the back line. Lemon Dogs taking down finally that third and final outer turret of the game. So we're a little bit more even on that front. Still the gold sits at three to four hundred as it starts to tick around. Actually that'll change things there with a big massive wave of creeps. And now awards start to go down towards Baron. Tense time here in this game, almost thirty minutes in. Getting really tense right now. I'm it's all about the, the first few steps of those team fights. Again, they're waiting for flashes here for Lemon Dogs. The two reasons that they did so well was the flash crescendo from Mithy, huge initiate. And then Nuke Duck was only slippery enough to get out of that with his life because he also had his flash. So that was the only reason he could kite this whole OMG team. And they're just spreading out, grabbing CS until they get those very important summoners back up. So everyone headed home right now. Void staff was completed for cool and a lot of pink walls being picked up here by ONG. So they want to try and assert some dominance when it comes to that vision wall, which right now they're certainly not doing a bad job of. But the fact they've lost that outer turret now and Lemon Dogs have shown they're willing to get into the ONG uh, jungle to start that vision wall going means that they're going to have to put down more pinks to try and clear out. Mithy's got an Oracles, but he has to be so careful with it. At any point, if Cool gets a Spirit Rush into Charm on him, he will die because with that Deathfire Grasp and the Void Staff you just pointed out, he can easily burst down the support in one single rotation. So, we heard earlier on, 10 minutes was the time that Lemon Dogs have to really survive to get things going in this game. They've made it to 30. And honestly, from the summer split, they, you know, the experience that we have is that Lemon Dogs, they're not a flashy team. They like to play these longer games. They get the job done. They are getting the job done so far. I think that people are have been underestimating the Chinese team in the mid and late game. Their team fights are usually very clean. I think that if they make a couple small adjustments to their team fight and their positioning, that they can still easily win that team fight. And that's why Lemon Dogs are still very wary. They need to get those very crisp flash crescendos to start things off. Right now, only 400 gold separates these two, and both of them setting up in middle. Again, as I mentioned, the wards being cleared out with those Oracle Elixirs with the pink wards that have been put down from both sides of the map. For now, it's OMG who force <laughs> Lemon Dogs back, and this little dance, you now it could go on for a while, but it's going to get explosive at some point. Yeah, they're trading. Uh, they're taking turns trading with the ward killing around Baron. Lemon Dogs are taking advantage of this lapse by grabbing the global gold from Dragon, but since OMG are the ones in control of Baron right now, it is a little bit risky. This is actually a very confident play here from Lemon Dogs. And it does get them a thousand global gold. Zoro Zero just face checked a little bit there, took some damage, but doesn't really matter. He's seen the rest of the team, and Lemdog's actually pushing up here on towards the turret. New Duck dives Whoa, in onto deep. the back line. He is miles away, will actually flash away a little bit. Here is Go going, moving around the side as well. He's got three of them trapped in. There is a crescendo. Cool going to be locked down, but can he get the charm onto Dexter? Yes, he can. It's Sam that finishes off as Nuke Duck tried to get Lovell in there at the back, but now he's running for his life. The rest of Lemon Dogs have already backed away to River, and it's Nuke Duck that's going to be chased down from this one, managing uh. to avoid a little bit of that damage, but how far can you really get against this Tristana? We'll see once his rocket jump comes up. There we go. Straight in on towards Nuke Duck. Uses that Zonyas. Can he get down the charm a little bit too early? But there's the explosion. Sam takes down Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck there, very aggressive initiate with the Fizz going so deep. I think they were overconfident with the way the last two team fights went. They thought they could even tower dive. That is not the case here against OMG. Like we said, Go Going got off his slicing Maelstrom that time, and it was devastating. That might even end up costing them this Baron. Only two members of Lemon Dogs in position here. Baron going down. We just saw the stats there for an average game time so far in Worlds. And OMG's games up until now have been 
That little bit short, that little bit longer. So there is the Baron taking down. Yeah. Great pickup for OMG. Yeah, I, that was definitely Lemon Dogs gang. A little overconfident. Nuke Duck, he was happy with how he was able to 100% sod up in that top lane by himself. But that was definitely an overaggressive move, and they paid the price with a huge, huge deficit now. Uh, Baron buff is means even more than the gold that they've got. So what are Lemon Dogs gonna do from this one? We saw them being overly aggressive when they were feeling confident. Now their opponents have that Baron buff on, so surely a little bit quiet at times in coming here for the Lemon Dogs. Not wanting to uh, throw any potential away that they've got from this one. It is still very close, but that Tristana really going to start to become a problem, as we saw in that last oh, yeah. fight. Oh, yeah. She's very, very strong at this point. Um, she Has she hit? Well, yes, that is level H 18 Tristana. So she has the maximum range. And with Go going now, being successful with his slicing maelstroms, it buys her that time to get her DPS out. I think that... Another thing that contributed to Lemon Dog's overconfidence there was that the early double up of the Abyssal Scepters that were bought by both solo laners of OMG. OMG kind of, they lost out on that early phase where we see them usually put a lot of aggression. With the two Abyssal Scepters, they didn't have enough to win the mid-game team fight where they usually get the first step. I'm wondering what they're going to put into effect here with that Baron, you know, most teams that will pick it up at that stage will say, okay, now it's time to push some towers down to start those team fights off. But up until now, OMG, they've kind of sat back here and just pushed those waves out. So Lemon Dogs, they're not really losing too much when it comes to that immediate power that Baron gave them. And Lemon Dogs are actually happy for uh, a stall right now. You know, they're yeah. waiting for not only the Baron buff to drop off, but also, again, those flashes that they have to have in order to make the first move. They have to be the ones with uh, the initiates here. They have to be the ones landing those crescendos and bursting down people like Go Going before they get off their key spells. This tower only has one more hit, though. There we go. Finished off. Obviously, OMG did do a little bit of damage to that one earlier on, but... That is at least something they picked up here with that Baron buff. It leaves the inhibitor completely open now for the taking, but you can see they're pretty wary of actually going into the base at this point. Not wanting to throw things Dragon away. Dragon coming up here. in just under two minutes' time as well. But right now it's a bit of a skirmish, a back and forth on the steps of the base. Yeah. I was also talking about San either going Bloodthirster, Phantom Dancer, or Infinity Phantom Dancer. He's got both right now. So not only does he have all that damage coming from the back line, but he also has sustain. So after he rocket jumps away or buster shots you away, he can lifesteal back up off of your tanks and get back to full life. So inhibitor focus down to less than half. OMG, tread very, very carefully here. Just making a step closer to taking down the first inhibitor of this game. There we go. Sang on a home in onto it. They are going to be able to take that inhibitor. Nuke Duck actually taking a lot of damage there and getting stunned up by Go Going. But OMG taking down the inhib. They're going to be happy and back away. That's that 703 range that we always talk about late game Tristana being so strong. She can get those stray shots onto an objective like a tower or an inhibitor without even having your front line go in. Very, very safe take right there. And then now it's actually OMG, the ones that are playing the slow, methodical game, ending this one out, taking all of the outer objectives now, trying to add more gold onto this inhibitor lead that they've got. Well, they're going to poke down the inner turret in this bottom lane right now. Zoro oh Zero no. actually dives in, but he's down to less than half HP. There's a crescendo coming in. Mithy gets knocked up. Lovelin was caught there by Chum the Waters, but he only lost half of his health. Go going, finally taken down. Right now, only one man down for ONG. That could change here quickly as Big Pomelo goes low. Lovelin is still low. San going very far forward in this one, but still they stand. Look at his health here, San. He's regening up so quickly. Yeah. The Bloodthirster right there definitely paying off. He's still back to full life. And four members means they can go for this one. They take down the turret and they continue to press in. Keep going on to this one. Sam 
not worried at this point thanks to that life steal that he's going to be able to get back by that next minion wave coming down he sets about the tower Lovelin trying to get those coconuts onto lemon dogs to see if he can get in nuke duck was having a sniff as well but actually santa got to outrange him by a mile and he knows that he just can't get close enough to even think about going in it's also scary because he's already he already has cowl there signed on tristana and once that turns into the banshee's veil it's, you won't even be able to catch him off guard and pick him off. If Nuka goes for his combo, he can't either the Chum the Waters or his initial damage burst in are going to be negated. It's, it's a good job by OMG. They're showing up all their weaknesses here, and it looks like they have a very solid hold on this endgame. So Baron Buff has now worn off and will be spawning again. In one and a half minutes time, the dragon is available for the taking as well, which uh, the later we go down this one, uh, the gold that it offers obviously not going to be the biggest thing around, but certainly something that OMG will quite happily deny to the Lemon Dogs. Right now, though, it's probably going to be all about regaining control of this barren area again. And again, Lemon Dogs do eat, have to be extremely careful right now. If they don't get the first step, then they're going to pay for it. We've seen two slicing maelstroms be successful and two very huge, crucial team fights for OMG grabbing them this huge lead. Now that their base is wide open as well, it's very dangerous then for them to extend up to that Baron pit to try and keep their vision alive. Crescendo is up for Mythic. He's so far, this game done well with getting the initiation from it, but without the flash available to him, it becomes all that much harder. Right now, Nuke Duck here waiting in the tribus. Oh. Lovely and puts a ward straight on top of his head. And just to add insult to injury, we'll clear out the wards from earlier on with that Oracle Elixir that he's got running. Now, dual death caps by, by both solo laners of OMG as well. So the power spike up here for all this dual AP means that. They are going to have pretty much all the control that they need in team fight. And it's going to be OMG making a huge mistake if they actually lose this one. Well, the ping's going down. Zoro Zero on the front, just narrowly avoiding the charm. Taking some poke back, but he is going to move in and try and get OMG oh. out of position from this one. And interestingly enough, Lemon Dog's able to go through there and grab that barren area control. Now, Zack is a very, very chancy initiator because the other team can see that shadow. And if he misses his elastic slingshot, he can get chunked out before the team fight even starts, just like last time. And there we go. He's already down to less than half. He's going to let bouncers go. Going oh, to the crescendo. back. Great crescendo from Mitty, but will he be able to survive? No, he won't. Cool now on a rampage as he shuts him down. Flashes in as well. They're going to keep up with the kills. Tabs is going to fall. That's a double kill here for Cool. Dex is walking away on the backside. Tabs is being chased down by Lovelin right now. This is going to be a close oh, fight. The Q missed. misses. Nuke Dog going to take him out. Brilliant stuff from Nuke Dog, but now Dexter is being chase as well by sign on this bottom side of the river is he going to be able to escape no he's not going to be able to oh, no dog even another. managing another one <laughs> finished off in the end though by the plants Ooh. all right yeah so zach is inherently a chancy initiator very risky because if you do miss that elastic slingshot and your team is not immediately following up you get first down before the team fight even starts and now omg with those death timers they're running on Nexus. They're looking. Oh, they're having a respawn. Oh, wow. That's always a bit of a pain. But OMG, you know, they've got these big death timers coming in. They are going to start taking down those Nexus turrets. They're going to pick up the Nexus kill and go 3-0 here with that victory over Lemon Dogs in Group A. Congratulations to OMG. They look very, very strong. We have to give credit here to the Lemon Dogs as well. You know, this yeah. game was incredibly, incredibly close for the longest of times. This wasn't, you know, level one masses of fights. It was a, a much slower game, to be honest. But OMG showing that they can perform in a fast game or a slow game. It doesn't matter to them. They know how to do this. I think that is the biggest takeaway from this one. Going up against Lemon Dogs, who are known for the slow late game and the strong late game, they were able to approve the early tower lead, and even though they started dual abyssal scepters, once they got the team fight to go their way with the cannon not being bursted down first, they won pretty much everything after that. It's a real question now: who can beat 
OMG, you know. Coming into this one, we knew how strong we were. We were, we were a little bit fooled almost, I think, to say that OMG weren't in the quarterfinals. Let's be honest, because they dominated LPL throughout Season 3. They lost to Royal Club, obviously, in the qualifier finals. And they came into the group stage. But that, that almost tricked us into thinking that they're maybe not going to be as strong as they are. And we've seen already they've beaten the, the top teams in the group. We also have to remember still, this game was so close. Yeah. Just a few moves at the very beginning of team fights basically decided that game. So let's get over to Riv and the guys at the desk for their thoughts on OMG's brilliant win. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and there is quite a bit to talk about. We're all pretty much huddled around each other for this entire match, back and forth, yes or no, you guys disagreeing and agreeing, so let's start it right away, and the only spot to start is picks and bans, so Crepo, hit us with that knowledge. Um, I, it was a really interesting pick and ban phase, like immediately we could see Ari was left open, and mm -hmm. not first pick, that indicates like two things, they don't care about the Ari, or like... Either it's lack of respect or it's preparation. And this time it was preparation. We could really see Ari open means Fizz. So on the, on the last rotation, they would pick Fizz. Then it comes to the point, what are you going to first pick? Elise. But to my knowledge, yeah. I'm not 100% sure here. I asked Money, he wasn't 100% either. Do they no. play a lot of Elise? OMG, we don't know. But it really felt like Lemon Dogs could have actually first picked Ken in there. Um, Zach was... I didn't see it. Then in the middle of the game, I started seeing. But then due to item choices, it wasn't as effective. But we'll get to that later. So they went out with the Elise, picked up the Fizz as a counter to Ari, and actually we went really well to the point where he lost his blue buff to the jungler. Um, but yeah, I think that the game went into his final fold, or it, when it initially mm -hmm. went really well for Lemon Dogs when they forced the lane swap and OMG yeah, had to react. Right at, right at the start of the game, even though you said they got a little bit lucky because OMG was so tunneled on getting that 2v2 lane. Yeah, good point. And Doublelift can talk about the lane matchup, like why they would have wanted that beforehand. But because they got to the lane so late, it put... Basically, Zach at an early survivability against Kennen, which shouldn't really be the case either, and allowed Corky to push to the lane early on for Lemon Dogs, which is why it seemed like they should have had control of that game, and it created the slow opening. And and that's just why I wanted to illustrate uh, the Chinese bottom lanes. Like this this guy San, he doesn't care about Corky. Uh, he doesn't have to play it. He can just play Trisan. It's a comfortable skill matchup for him, and he'll outskill Corky as you saw this game. His item choice was really. Uh, interesting to say the least because he didn't have a Lasso Spirit even at, with 5 item Tristana. But it doesn't matter because Tristana is just a monster late game. And he managed to, even with the bad start, make it to the mid late game as Trist. It, it wasn't just a lane swap though for me. Taking a look at Loveland's early jungle path. I mean we were talking about how the warding effectively mm -hmm. gave them a free blue steal that would have been unknown. Uh, to yeah, the Lemon, Lemon Dogs, dogs really and thin. instead he started red, blue, wraiths, and then tried to gank that mid lane, and it wasn't the same kind of pathing efficiency like we saw against SK Telecom. Then at the same time, it would have, if he would have changed his path, he would have probably ended up ganking top lane, which due to the lane swap was initially behind. You saw Dexter waiting there for a minute, so actually Lovelin not playing the ideal path went in OMG's favor because Dexter was camping that top lane yeah. rush for over like a he minute. He was hoping for a counter gank. He was gank hoping the whole for time. a counter gank, and it didn't came, and actually that put OMG slightly ahead. Although you have to at the same time admit that Lemon Dogs were really lucky because they went for a super safe start because their level one was inferior. And well, was yeah. well, right, but it, Dexter wouldn't have been able to be up there if he hadn't gotten his own blue and then went top either. So if they had taken blue to red, yeah, completely then, agree. So it, I think it just changed everything. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. I feel like that game was so much a Lemon Dogs style of game and a Lemon Dogs game to win because the laning phase being yeah, slow is exactly what they wanted. But then Mithy kept getting hit by the roots from Zyra in lane. It turned that bottom lane around. There was the very unlucky blue buff that Nukedag wasn't able to get on Fizz. And those two things combined swung so much momentum back for that OMG. That influenced the dragon. The first dragon OMG got so much because, I mean, you can always go into hypotheticals, but an Ari with blue buff pushing down a Fizz means Fizz will farm the, almost the same on the tower because Nukedag is such a mechanically strong player, but he will always mm. be the second one to farm. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest factors that changed that game was the top laners. Um, Zach's poor item choice with Sork Shoes just let him oh, get CC'd girl. as the game went on. But... Um, Kennen also played really, I would say, shaky. He got caught a lot, 
Go going was like always in front, getting caught, had to flash out. And at one point he hourglassed and then he ultied after his hourglass was done, hitting nobody. So he had a really rocky start to the game, but you can fix that problem as the game goes on. You can play better, but you can never go back on a bad item choice. And I feel like it. if Zach went Mercs, yeah, you can sell it. You <laughs> we should have sold You it. lose a lot of money. After two fights with those sword shoes, he should have yeah, sold it. Yeah, well. he was doing nothing. It's especially because, the, I mean, we saw those sword shoes come in. And uh, to put this in context, it's because of those tenacity nerfs on yeah. Zach's ultimate. So it looked like Zora was wasn't comfortable on playing on the new Zack, perhaps, that he hadn't mm. really gotten in there and tested it. I, I mean, think, I think do you think he was tested it because he was up against something, you know, that caught your eye as well as the double early Abyssal Scepter build coming out from OMG. So he's kind of thinking he needs to be able to impact for his team as well. Well, mm. it did give them a lot of that magic resistance. We were all talking mm. about this as well against, uh, you know, the quirky missiles and, you know, we, we had the Elise as well. So a lot of yeah. AP damage coming out of the team. However, well, I, I think it was okay on the cannon because you know the cannon's going to get hit by all of that stuff. I, th I still think that even though Fizz is very strong and you may want to itemize MR, I still really like the DFG first because Cool is a playmaker. He's the, he's the core of OMG. And I think he should have more confidence in himself, really, to be able to skirt the outside of that AoE. Yeah. I agree. And also, I just wanted to point out, like, Lemon Dog's team comp works only when Zac is really disruptive. And he it's needs just, to land that just yeah, he needs to time. get in right. there, mm -hmm. right? Like, they have Fizz, they have Elise, they have... They have these champions that need to get in with the disruption of Zac, and he was just stopped in his tracks every team fight. If he lands a perfect light bounce, though, then Magic Pen boots are better. But then he yep. needs to land spot on on three people and then avoid mm -hmm. getting stunned. Although we have to, like, look if we saw. Lemon Dogs actually came back. Like, so they yeah. won early. It was such a crazy They game. got behind. Then Nuke Dog started in, like, the Nuke Dog show, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Up until the point where he dived mid past the tower. And I think that was because he did not see Tristana building Spectre's Cow. Because otherwise he would have probably blown up Tristana. His team would have dove in with him, not cared about mm -hmm. fighting on a tower. But I think that Spectre Scowl right there, combined with Nuke Dog's slight bit of arrogance, which actually gives him so many kills on the other hand, definitely turned that game around. Well, this is also, after that, I feel like Go Going's just split-second uh, aggression before the rest of the team could come in as well. Yeah, zoning him out, yeah, zoning him out, out with really his well. ult, and Cool was there with the follow-up charm also, so I think it was a good reaction as well from OMG. Yeah, I think really surprisingly, the item choices from OMG had a fairly large impact on the victory for the game, because I know we had, we actually had a pretty lengthy discussion about the double Abyssal Scepter and which one was I still was don't better. like it. I pretty <laughs> lengthy. Do you like it? See, I like the double Abyssal Scepter I, from I like double Abyssal, I just prefer DFG before Abyssal. Well, here's already. why I like the double Abyssal Scepter here, and I think it's one of the reasons that Nuke Duck tunneled so hard on Tristana in the end, because as soon as they rush the Abyssal on the mid lane Ari, it's because he respects Nuke Duck, right? And so many, no, not many people give him, you can counter this in a second, but like, <laughs> when he has... That phase. Yeah, when he has the ability to go in and assassinate really only one person cleanly, he tunneled on him over and over again in these team fights, and eventually tunneled on Tristana, which was honestly, a, obviously a mistake going in. And I think that's the mistake that cost him the game. I just feel even regardless, if they wouldn't have that Abyssal, he would still opt to go for Tristana. Because yeah. Fizz just makes AD carries disappear, and his team could deal with Ari a little better compared mm. to how he could deal with Tristana, I imagine. All right. Double the okay. final thoughts there. Look, I got something to say. I, I hate the double whistle scepter because I, I like to min max, and I think if Ari wanted MR to respect Nuke Duck, he should have went at Thieves. The 20% CDR actually makes up for the lack of well, M pen that you yeah. get. It's, it's obviously not just to respect Nuke Duck, it's because it works for everything in their game. Like, there is more magic damage in that Lemon Dog's composition than we see out of almost any mm -hmm. team composition in this entire World Championships. Because Corky, when you look at your damage dealt after the game, he's pretty much half, maybe more magic damage, especially when a cannon's in team fights kind of zoning him back. Elise's all magic damage as well. Like, everything is about that Negatron cloak. He gets to build into an item. That's the only reason I like it. Mm. All right, guys. Still a good game, though. Oh my, very good. I always thought game. Lemon Dogs this was, was a world class game, one. in my yeah, opinion. Very, yeah, very, very close. Well, they're doing it in the right place on the right stage. And with that, let's check out the Group A standings hot off the rift. OMG on top at 3 and 0. SKT T1 at 1.